Hey there, so in this one we'll be setting up a Skyrim inspired kind of puzzle block door where you have to rotate these little pendulums around in order to line them up with the material texture thing on top to... oh wait that was the one wasn't it? in order to unlock that door and we'll make it to where you can reuse these to have different amounts so in case you only wanted There it is. In case you want different doors to require different amounts, you can do that. And yeah, so let's jump on into it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is in our blueprints folder, let's go into our interaction system and we'll create a, yeah, we'll create a new folder that we will call our puzzle door folder. Double click open that up. First thing we will need is the little pendulum thing that turns around. So I'm going to create a blueprint class of an actor. And this will be puzzle podium. I don't really know what to call these. Maybe trigger. Puzzle trigger. That makes more sense probably. But we'll double click open that up. And so the first thing we need to add is a static mesh. This will be the, the base of it. So for that I'm just going to use a cube. And I'm going to set it to be about 0.25 on the X and on the Y. And then drag it up. Actually, you know what? Let's just drag it out in the world and then we can tell better what size we need it. So I want it to be a little bit taller, but a little bit thinner. So 0.15 on the X and Y. And then maybe 2 on the... 1.5 on the Z. That ought to be good enough. That looks good. All right, and we need one more static mesh. This will be the the rotating box portion. So I'm just going to call it box. And for now, it's just going to be a, yeah, actually, it's just a, a cube also. But this one is just going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.6 across the board. So hitting this little lock will actually make it to where you can just punch it in one, and it'll lock the scale so it stays. So that looks fine for now. Now we also want to, in our class settings, add our interact blueprint interface. That way we can actually get this and rotate it. So in the event graph, let's go ahead and set up its rotation function. So on event interact, basically we want to take this from its rotation and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to grab my box get its relative rotation because the relative rotation is its rotation according to the blueprint. If you do it in the world rotation it'll be it could have different values and it'll throw things off a little bit. So we want to get its relative rotation promote that to a variable called start rotation plug that in real quick. No oh, actually first thing we should add a branch because we don't want them to be able to just spam the button or else it'll throw off its uh, its calculations. So from the condition we'll just promote that directly to a variable called can rotate. And then if that's true then immediately after that once it's interacted we want to set that to false. So that as soon as they interact with it they can't interact with it again. So once we've got our start rotation, we basically want to take that and add 90 degrees to it. So we will add a timeline, because we don't want it to be immediate. We don't want it to snap to the new rotation. So we'll just call it, I'm going to call it rotate, call it whatever you like. I'm going to go to play from start. And what I want it to update is that box's relative rotation. So I'm going to grab that box one more time and set relative set relative rotation. We'll connect that to our update pin 
Now we're gonna take this new rotation, let's make a rotator. Let's grab out our start rotation and we can break the rotator. So X and Y can all remain zero, but for the Z we wanna take it and add 90 to it. That way it just spins 90 degrees and then it'll be done. Oh, pfft. but first we need to actually lerp. We need to lerp the rotator, we can't just make it. <laughs> Because I was thinking, where are we going to plug the elf in? I don't see it, but that's my bad. So, we still need all this, but we'll take this start rotation and plug it into A, because A is where a lerp starts from, B is where it's going, so this is the B. So let's double click and open up that timeline, and I'm going to say the length probably one second sounds good. We can adjust it if we need to. We'll add a float track called alpha. I'm going to right click and add a key to the beginning, time 0, value 0. Right click, add another key, time 1, value 1. So I'm going to zoom out and box select both of those. Zoom to fit horizontal so that we can see it a little bit better. Right click for the key interpolation, I'm just going to let it auto. So back in the event graph, we can hook our alpha directly there. And then once it's finished with this timeline, we can just set rotate or set can rotate back to true. So let's drop this. Oh, it is in the world. Well, let's take a look. One second might be a little bit too slow. I'm going to say 0 0.5. 0 0.5 be fine. So you set the length up here and then the time right here in order to adjust them. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. I like it. All right, but in order for this to communicate with the gate door, we are going to need a blueprint interface. And this will be puzzle door underscore BPI. So we'll double click and open that up. And I'm just going to add one function called unlock. It will take one input of an integer called locks and it'll be like I said an integer. Alright. Now back in our puzzle podium real quick. We need to add some things to our thing. <laughs> I'm going to highlight the puzzle podium and I want to add an arrow so I can see which way is front on this bad boy. So this will be forward. <coughs> so I want to take a bo our box and add a box collision to it. So this will basically be uh, It'll overlap the other piece, and then why is that like that? So I just defaulted it back to one. That should be good right there. But what you'll see is if I rotate this, that collision goes with it. So now on the base, we'll do the same thing and add a box collision as a child of it, since that doesn't rotate. Wow. What is? Oh, it's taking the shape of the box. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, I'm just gonna add this as a child of the default scene root. So I'll just drag this up plop it in place right here. We want it to where these will overlap when these is facing forward. So I don't really need it to be that big. I'll just say 0 0.5, 0 0.6. They don't have to overlap perfectly, but you know, it doesn't hurt anything. 
So right now its default rotation is 0. So since we want these to be kind of randomized, let's set it up to where every time it pops into the world, or every time the game starts, it has a random rotation. So let's grab that box, the one that we rotate, and we are going to set its relative rotation. We will make a vector, not make a vector, make a rotator here. And from the Z, let's just select. We'll do a select, not select float, just select. And we can add a pin here because we want it to have three options. Since its base starting point is zero, let's do 90, 180, and 270. So, what happened? Oh, the wild card. Okay, so for the wild card, I'm just going to do a random integer in range. And then since we got 0 to 2, let's just do 0 to 2 like that. So now when we compile and come out here, you'll see if I drag this around, it'll go everywhere around it. That's hard to see. It'll go everywhere around it except for defaulted back to us original place and if I come in here and I say let's make this not hidden in game and you can see as it rotates our little key can line up so what we want to do is when this box overlaps this box we want to communicate to a door that we've added one of the unlocks into the right place. In order to communicate with a door, we actually need to make a door, so let's create another blueprint class. This will be puzzle door underscore BP. Double click and open that up. Just gonna add a static mesh that will be called door. I'm gonna make this also a cube but I am going to minimize it, not minimize, but drag it down so that I can come out here, drag it into the world and kind of position it accordingly. So for the X scale B.5, oh, I had it, I had it on lock. So 0 0.5, 0 0.25 on the X, three on the Y and three on the Z. That looks pretty good. And I'll just drag this up like so. Yeah, that looks, that looks good. Good enough for a door, that would block me. So in its class settings, we want to add its puzzle door BPI also. Since this is the door that's going to have the locks, so we want to be able to communicate and be like, hey, we're getting, you know, unlocked. So, event unlock. What we need to do is tell it we need the door to have a certain amount of locks needed and a certain amount of locks that it has. So we're going to add a couple integers. This will be current locks which is probably counterintuitive, it probably should be count current unlocks, uh, but I'm just going to leave it like this. So locks required or unlocks required, however you want to do it. I'm going to make this visible, so clicking this little eye, that way we can reuse these uh, where we would like to. So when we call this event unlock, we want to get our current locks and we are going to add this amount coming into it and then we can set the current locks to that new amount and then if our current locks is greater than no if it's equal to our locks required then we will call a function so for right now I'm just going to create a custom event called open door and all it's going to do is print a string. 
and this is just to show that it's gonna work so open says me so from the true just call that open door function compile that so we will now be back in our puzzle podium so on box one overlap let's highlight that box one and on component begin overlap we want to get the other component that it's overlapping and see if it is equal to the box two so if the other component is equal to box two then we will call our unlock function so in order to actually call our unlock function we will need to tell it what actor we want it to unlock so we're going to create a new variable that's called door ref and this will be our puzzle door blueprint actor object reference I'm going to click that little eye right there so we can tell it exactly which one we want out in the world so when we when these do overlap we want to communicate our message of unlock and the locks here will be one so now if we continue to spin that thing around and the boxes unoverlap or end overlap then we want to tell it to take that one away so we'll highlight that box one more time and on component end overlap we'll do basically the same thing well actually the exact same thing so we can just copy and paste that here other component equals box 2 and if it is then we want to subtract so it'll be negative one on this one so just to make sure these are working on this begin overlap I'll add a print string that says added and another print string on the bottom that says subtracted so added subtracted access none yeah I forgot to set the door so uh, let's set the door it needs one lock and for this the door reference we can click this little eyedropper or you can click this little down um, I'm just gonna use the eyedropper and click that one so now once this overlaps it'll say open says me huzzah <coughs> so now we actually need to set up the opening functionality so what we're gonna do is when the door is mm, right here before we call open door we want to do a do once though so let's set a do once right there so now when it opens the door we need to get actor location and then we can come out and grab our actor real quick right now it's at location 100 and in order to get it fully under the ground it needs to go to negative 210 so that's a difference of 310 so we'll take this location subtract 310 from it and then that'll be its new location so let's add a timeline called opening it'll play from the start actually since it's a do once it could probably just play but play from start is fine so we are going to set actor location we'll set that to the update and for the new location we want to lerp the vector so we want to get our actor location for the A and then our actor location minus 310 on the Z and then that's the B or however much it takes for your door to get under the ground so I'm going to double click and open up this timeline and set it to a length of two seconds or however long you want it to be I'm going to call this one alpha also our float track here right click and add a key at the zero zero and then 
at time two value one. Zoom to fit, right click, auto interpolate. Kind of a smooth. I don't know why I raise my hand to try to mimic it when you can't see my hand, but all right, we hooked that alpha up just like that. Whoa, what in the world? Oh, 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 because I'm, cause I'm just getting the actor location. So every frame, it's just taking and updating its location. So when we open the door, we actually want to promote its, uh, its location to a start location. So we'll hook this up just like that play that from start and then we can take this and hook it to the A and the subtract. So there we go. All right, so now if I want this to require three different locks, let's just duplicate this out. So now it's got one. Let's say I undo that one and go check these over here. And then there it goes. Huzzah. All right. But I don't want these cubes, these box collisions. I don't want them showing in the world. What I want is actually for this to have multicolored sides that we can kind of specify. So what we can do is we can actually create a in our geometry section in our place actors let's bring out a box that I will set to roughly the same size so what was it 0.6 so its scale will be just 0.6 that's not that's not the same at all 0.3 Point three is close enough. All right, so I am going to create a material. This will be puzzle box base underscore mat. And basically it's just going to be a three color vector. So holding three on the keyboard and left clicking will give you this. And then multiplied, I'm actually gonna convert that to a parameter. So right click that node and we can convert it to a parameter called color because I wanted to have multicolored sides and uh, plug that into the multiply that you get with an M and a left click and then holding S on the keyboard and left click we can get a scalar parameter and this will be glow strength I don't know that I'll actually make it glow I'm going to default it to 15 and then just plug it into the emissive color I'm going to apply that and I'm going to create three material instances of it, and one's going to be red underscore inst. Then I'm going to duplicate it, blue underscore inst. And then duplicate one more time for a green one underscore inst. Open up each one, and this one's the red. Wait. Oh. Well, that's white. There we go. Green color and oh, I'll just do one here. That'll work. And you can just punch in the so this one's blue, so one on the blue. And the reason we need a couple different materials is because we want this box to have multicolored sides. So I'm going to highlight the box and then under geometry I'm going to select all adjacent surfaces and I want to apply my base material. Yeah, just like that. So then I want to select one side, put the red another side, put the green other side, set the blue. Now these don't have to remain the colors, this is just so that when we create convert this into a static mesh that the materials will all be, it'll have that many material elements. So that's really the whole reason. 
Now under surface property, not surface properties, brush settings all the way down here might look like this but basically in this one click this advanced and you can create aesthetic mesh I'm going to set this into our puzzle door folder and this will be the puzzle box underscore sm for static mesh so now if I open this up you'll see I get all those material instances I can change them to whatever I want So now inside this puzzle podium, I can replace this box with the puzzle box. Ooh, why are you? Oh, because, okay. Let's change it back to one. So it's the green side that's the front on that one, which is element two. So let's say we want it to have something above it that tells you which you know, what what side of it you have to get or you can do this however you want but I'm just gonna show you how to apply it directly above it and we are going to take our box we are going to set material for element Two, and then we're going to promote this to a very not a local variable but promote it to a variable called unlock uh, material I guess that works and we'll click this little eye so that we can see it in the world <coughs> sorry now back in our viewport let us highlight our default scene route and we're going to add I'm just going to add a plane I'm going to drag it up above and rotate it to face the same direction as our arrow and I'm gonna alter its size and shape just a little bit so on the Y maybe is it 0.5 here and then 0.5 here no what are you they were just go back to 1 0.5 on the X that works well, let's make it about the same size as, same size as the face of it. So 0.6 seems to be about right. And then it has one element, which it's an array, so it starts at zero. So we will grab our plane, set material. It'll be element zero, so it can just stay default. And we'll just hook that unlock material just right there to it. So since we don't have anything actually set as that uh, that variable you notice that the green is still green okay but what we can do is let's just go through and just pick something so for this one what do I got let's see I can do cobblestone pebbles and then that changes and that changes the cube would probably be better since it would be double-sided but no must no fuss all right so on this one I'll just do let's see cop oh copper copper and for this one concrete concrete grime that'll work all right So now I can look above it and it's like, okay, now I know I need to rotate that until this is facing that way. And hey, there it is. And then, yeah, that's added too. Yeah, cube would have probably been better, but we're this far in, so. All right, and uh, so let's say you have, later on, you want to have this kind of duplicated. Uh, probably wouldn't recommend using these too many times but let's say you had another one and you just wanted one or you wanted to introduce the mechanic with just one puzzle podium at a time so let's just set that there we will set the door reference to that one make sure that the door reference has one lock required then set the material to I don't know um, 
Yeah. So, let's say I need to get through this one. Oh, crap. Alright, this one opens and then I come and like, oh no, there's another one. Let's see. And then that one opens, so hooray! So, that's pretty much all it takes. So, alright. So in the next one we'll start setting up some other little levers and traps and stuff to get ready for putting the dungeon together. So I'll see y'all in a bit. Bye.